What's going on this week, YouTube? Um, here we are, we're back. Back on the trailer. Um, I'm gonna start working on this 65 Chevy Biscayne. Um, pretty much the same thing as last week. We're gonna take tires off, uh, cut the brakes off, and uh, cruise right into the inside of it and see what the hell we got out of this thing. So far, um, under the frame, under here, it's looking a lot better than that 68. And uh, we'll get to that when we get it all cut off here. Kind of looking forward to it. I like this car. So we'll see what we got and go from there. All right, voila, it, it is done. Uh, this one actually went pretty smooth. By God, it turns good. Um, I'm gonna start working up front now. See what we got up there. Actually, we're pounding this thing out. We lost a piece of the coil spring. So, good sign or bad sign, but so far the frame looks really good up back in here. Right here too. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty hopeful about this one. Thank God. I don't know. I don't want to get my hopes up too much for it, but I think it's a winner. We'll see. We're honestly here all about production today. Um, time is money. Up here in the northern part of the United States, we're starting to lose a lot more light during the day. So um, try to get some most of this done today quick. Um, so we don't have to do it tomorrow. Fucking snow. All kinds of good stuff coming up. This, this year is really a rare occurrence that the center comes out, so I've kind of been spoiled today here. All right, this one is done. So we're working pretty good today. Things are just working out. That's an old saying, even the even the sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while. And God damn it, it's my day. Hub turns really nice. Now if you guys watch that video on that 68, we had to pop the cover, take the nut off. Uh, the bearings inside were so shot, so rusty that they were just locked up. So I said there's actually more positive things going on right now with this car than than that previous car that we did but that's the way it goes making good time in the day swing over to the passenger side i'm hoping this goes well Kind of hanging off the trailer here a little bit. Do we dare push it back over with the skid steer or just let her buck? Well, I have to set you guys up on the ground to watch this one. Hate having you guys looking over my back working. God damn it. Kind of sketchy actually. I don't know. Well, let's give her hell.
All right, we're going to go for a little ride here. we got to get some wheels and tires for this bad boy. Uh, we'll take the skids through at the forks. Got an S10 out back. Just lift it up at the forks. Put around some cement blocks because I don't foresee the S10s going anywhere for a while. So let's go for a ride. Give you guys a little sneak peek of some of the stuff we have out here. Um, a lot of third gen Camaros, um, square body stuff. And we got wagon row down here too. We try to put all of our wagons together. Just moving cars around this this summer when we had time. I'm not done yet, so it takes time. I'm just so damn hard to get. We got a couple of S10s back here. I mean, back in my younger days, I was just a S10 man all the way. I love these goddamn things. Still do. Get them picked up without moving that Taurus. All right, let's see if we can wreck anything here. This S10's pretty shitty anyway, so not worried about it. That's a wrap for today on this thing. Um, we achieved our goal. We got it down with some S10 wheels and tires and got all the brakes loosened up, which wasn't too bad on this one. Actually, it was a lot better than that 68. Stuff wasn't as tight, rusted up. So, feeling pretty good about that. Frame looked good so far. Let's cruise over here to the passenger side. I gotta push it over with the skid suit tomorrow before we unload it. I don't think we'll clear the fenders. Hate to run her off the trailer. Yeah, she's taking shape. She's pretty excited. So, next thing we'll hit the interior and open that trunk up. I'm still waiting to see what's in that trunk. I have not touched it yet. No idea. So, hard to say. Pretty excited though. Let's see what's going on in there. All right, we're back today. Um, a little different out here today. Looks like almost from the movie from The Mist. Pretty dark, cruddy, cold. I was going to show you guys before we get started here. Um, trunk locks. And I'm sure a lot of you probably know this, but uh, the people that don't know it, if you got a lock in here, you don't have a key. I don't have a key for this car. I don't have a key for ignition doors, anything. You see this? Somebody already kind of worked in here and popped this. But the cylinder is there. Uh, what I've learned over time, if the cylinder's still in there, just drill it out. And to get in there, I don't know if you guys be able to see in there. It's hard. But you stick a long screwdriver in there, and there's like a notch in there. I haven't opened this trunk yet, so we're going to look at this together. To get that flat screwdriver in there, you'll feel a notch in there. Can't go anymore? Look at that. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. No, oh, no gold bars. Probably makes a lot of sense why this car is taking so far in the back. Ah, looks like we got a GM engine. Transmission, radiator. Hmm. Well, no retirement today. Huh. Assuming this goes maybe with the car. I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't got underneath the hood yet to see if it's an original V8 car or V6 car. I mean, there's worse things a guy could dig out of the trunk. I'll take it. I don't know. Maybe the block is rebuildable. I have no idea. At least it's been undercover. That was a power glide. I don't know. Not real good with identifying the transmissions, but. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. At least it's something. Should make it look a little bit better when we get that. Get that out of the car here. We need to. Oh, don't they do that look out in the east coast at the lift the front and sag the ass? I don't know. 
Anyway, so we're gonna get started on cleaning this interior out. We got a rodent control specialist in the day. His name's Frankie. He'll be he'll be helping us out today. Keep the mice population to a controlled number. So yeah, let's start kicking ass on this interior and go from there. All right, uh, last week, I should take that off while I'm talking. Last week, um, we cleaned that 68 out, kind of said, hey, we should have a mask on. Well, I stopped down at Harbor Freight, picked one up, and I'll show you guys why I want to wear a mask during this stuff, and, and you should probably too. Um, don't want to sound like a safety Nazi here, but uh, if you actually look in here of why, you might consider it. So let's take a look. All right, right here, raccoon shit, um, a lot of diseases in there. Um, I know, I don't know anybody personally that's ever died of it, but you always hear about it on the news up in this area. You know, I just, it's not really worth it. So we are going to mask up on this one. Let's start cleaning. We're gonna give this thing a special treatment this week. Actually vacuum it out. All right, this side didn't turn out too bad. I think they must have hit something with this. You see the floor pan is pushed up. It's still good back here, but. See up front there, we got some a pretty good sized hole in there, but she found that. I think we found the ignition key for it up there. Laying underneath the seat. Nothing real interesting yet, but. Let's look over to the passenger side. All right, we're back working on this 65 today. Um, you can see we got it down on the ground. Kind of skipped over unloading it, actually it went pretty good. Rolled nice, uh, just pushed it right off the trailer. And by God, look at it, just landed right next to a beautiful original 69 four door. This thing's a gem, really. Um, we'll work on that at a later date. Well, it's kind of cool to show that one off over here, working on the 65. Uh, not much left on this thing. Made pretty good headway. I didn't really walk around it too much after we got the front cleaned out. Pretty good hole there. Obviously over there. Had to do a little bit of body work in back here. I don't know if they hit something with the car or if it was from the guy that loaded it, lifted the car up and smashed these pans up. But I had to beat the hell out of this pan back down it was all up in here it was caved up I'll give her a couple more wax all 
All right, I just kind of want to flatten that out. Open up that hole, the drain hole a little bit there. I could shove some of that, the rest of that dirt out of there. So, what else we're gonna do today quick? Before we wrap this video up, I just shove that stuff down in there. Kinda works out nice. It'll hide in the snow. We'll mow it. Mow over it in the summertime and act like nothing ever happened. So. Sorry, that was bugging me. So, I'm going to pull this back seat out. Just want to see how it looks under there. Um, like I said, if you're watching this channel, you're probably familiar with how to pull these back seats out. If not... Um, so there's a clip on each end. What I usually do is I take my knee, push in, and pull up on that seat. And it'll come out of the clips. I accidentally already did it and forgot my camera. So you'll see the clips when we do it. I'll just pull it up here. Let's see how much garbage is under there. Oh, yeah. I just add more work to what I want to do today, but. Oh, look at that. Trim ring. Good thing we pulled it out. All right. There we go. That was uh, pretty nasty. You can see the rest of this goodness. Ah, look at that. Another trim ring. It's good because I think, well, that's what we found in it so far. So we're getting closer and I haven't dug to the trunk yet. So I'm hoping there's some in there. Now let's see, I'm gonna show you guys some clips pulling up a seat on these babies. Right, right here. There's your notch. You want to push push seat in, pull it up. I'll show you on the back side of the seat where it is. Should be right, I'm thinking right here. That would probably make sense because there's one there and one here. Clip in there. And the backs, I'm pretty sure are about the same. Yeah, you just pick up on it back there. See, there's a hook right, right there. One right there, one on each end. Just push it up, boom, out. I don't think I'm gonna take that out. Um, I'm just gonna clean up this bottom pan. I gotta get my mask on. And finish this baby off. Now, there's two things I always wanna find in life. Number one, an arrowhead. And number two, a build sheet. I've never found either one of them yet. So, I must just get bad cars and no luck when I'm out on the water. But one of these days, I'm going to find a build sheet. I've never found one. I always see guys online, how oh, I found a build sheet in the seat or here, here. Oh, I've never found one yet. Never. And maybe I have, and i just thrown it away by accident because it's been so disintegrated. But... All right, I'm gonna clean this up quick and we will see how the bottom floor pan underneath the seat turns out. I kinda wanna get some more of this stuffing out of here. Spoon shit. Everything else imaginable.
All right. You can see right off hand here. I'm overly pretty impressed with this um, for the amount of stuff that was in here. Um, I was kind of expecting it to be worse. But thankfully it's not, especially with this window down here. I didn't even know there was a window in there, but it looks like the track got kind of bent around there. Maybe try to bend that back. And try to get that window up for winter time. Um, so, the reason I clean all this stuff out and kind of gave this one a little bit more thorough cleaning is because I'd like to, I don't know about fully restore this car, but at least drive it, enjoy it eventually. And if you let these cars sit, and this car probably sat probably from the 80s, and just over time, more and more and more stuff got in here, seats deteriorated, moisture got in here, and it's just a hotbed for this, um, to rust your pans out and stuff. So I'd rather have it cleaned out, and I popped these little drain plugs here. There's one right here, see it? And one right there where that pliers is. I usually pop them drain pan or drain plugs so that, you know, if I can't get this window up, at least if it rains in here, it'll come out the car and it won't sit in here and pool up. It won't pull up with all this dirt, all this garbage in here and just create more moisture and never dry out. Um, I've had cars where I've cleaned them out and they've just been just soaking wet in there. And I'm surprised there's even been floor pans in a car. And, uh, See, there's that plug. Just pull it out with a plier. So it's just, that's my, what I do, I guess. Um, I know everybody's probably got their own ways of doing things and, you know, might depend on what kind of climate you're in also. Because not everybody lives up here in the Midwest and deals with this kind of stuff. Of never ending rain for four days. Or snow for six months all year. Or 115 degree weather. If it wasn't raining out today, I'd probably dread to vacuum out here and really give this thing a clean up. But we open this one up here, open that one up over there, there and there. Um, what I might do before we actually store this car away for winter, and it doesn't go inside, I don't have indoor storage for all this shit. So probably just put a piece of wood over it and like a cement block. So nothing else can get in here. I mean, there's not much. Yeah, you're going to get your mice and stuff like that, but, and that's just part of the nature. But I don't really want a coon in here or something else living in here. So that's kind of a wrap up on the interior on this thing. I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, you know, if it's just kind of a, a hands-on view of what cars are before they actually look good. This is what you got to deal with. So it was an automatic car. So I'm thinking that transmission in the back, maybe it is original out of it. Maybe it was a V8 car. You know, I haven't got the hood open yet. And clean the dash up. Well, just part of the design. It's kind of cool. So 81 thousand two ninety nine could be eighty one thousand could be a hundred eighty one thousand I know some people that would be like this is an eight thousand mile car I never rolled over well I have a hard time believing that so you kind of see that all the time on some auctions with vehicles it's kind of funny really teach their own how they own advertise so Back to business. Um, let's get that motor and tranny out today. Get this ugly thing back in there. And that should be a wrap on this, this car. I have to get that glove box open too. Let's try that quick. Let's see if we can't just pry that thing open. I'm sure it's locked. Oh, well, wait a minute. We did find some keys underneath the seat right here
Now, do you guys actually think I'd be lucky enough to find the glove box key? Let's see. Oh. oh. All right. Let's see. Let's see what's in here. I love finding shit in here. Well. By God, look at that. You guys can see that. Brand new, almost Chevy horn. It must be the horn. Gotta be. Oh, that's a find in itself. Let's see what else we got here. The facts of the matter, 24. Proper care everywhere. Speed. Authorized dealer. Owner protection plan. So this old girl had a 24 month or 24,000 mile warranty. Now you probably don't think that's a lot, but back in the day, I think 100,000 miles is quite a quite a mileage for a car. Let's see what else we got here. To get you safely on your way, Tiger, East River. East River what? East River Electric? I know that's such a thing. Let's see, one more thing. Sony, no, sorry, have you violated the parking meter ordinance? One, four, eight of 78. Somebody got a parking ticket. Nothing in there, so they must have paid it. Your vote will be appreciated. Elect John Hack, County Commissioner. I spent up 12 gauge, I got 20 gauge. Oh, 12 gauge. So nothing really exciting except for the uh, horn button. I was wondering, because we've been missing that, and I never even thought about it. Usually that shit just ends up somewhere else. But that's in pretty damn good shape. Huh, good find today. Always, always, uh, always worthwhile going and digging in some shit. Going the extra mile. I'm glad we found the key. I mean, it's not that it really matters, but maybe that's not the ignition key. I have no idea. But we found it. Found some trim rings for the headlights. One bucket for the headlight. So all in all, not bad. A couple pieces that a guy wouldn't have to buy um, if you're gonna, if we ever got to rebuild this old girl. Let's throw that seat in there quick. And make this a wrap on this interior. All right, let's uh, let's get back on this trunk here. Try to get this motor and tranny out today. Give this thing a better look. Gotta try to find a good mounting place for you guys. So I still don't have my good stand from Amazon. I mean, I thought they usually make airdrop shit to people and drones, but it's been like a week and a half. And maybe it's because I'm not a Prime member. I'm just gonna sit you guys there for one minute, and then I'm gonna be back. All right, uh, we found a radiator, oil pan, cross member. We have some odds and ends. 
But I'm looking at this wiring. I mean, when they pull this engine out, they pull the whole goddamn wiring out too. And there's it. Goddamn battery cables in here. And I'm all about taking an engine out, but God. Whatever. To each their own. I guess we all got our own style of things. Um, let's go get some sky hooks. Bolt on this bad boy. Yank it out. See how the trunk pan is under there. I'm thinking it's pretty solid. So like I said, I'm feeling pretty damn good about this car. Now I just uh, get that motor tranny out and get a damn title for it. So, let's go find some sky hooks. All right, I think we're in business. I don't know. It could be. Didn't find exactly what I wanted. It's not like we're here to be a hero, anyways. You're like, what in the South Dakota is going on here? So let's see. Let's cross this thing. Cross that bolt. I'm just gonna find a spot for the front one. I actually trust. And it's not like we're lifting like a twenty thousand dollar engine transmission combo here, but my luck, I hit the quarter pan in order to fall. That's my luck. I mean, I... let's get you guys mounted up here. I think I'm gonna go right in that bracket over there. The bell housing or the water pump. I get this goddamn camera to stay. I'm thinking this is going to be a good location here since uh, we got no heads on it. You know, one of them Will It Run videos? I don't know if you guys seen any of them or not. They're not on YouTube yet. Do you think this thing would run? Maybe a little uh, holding the cylinders, oil them up. Be out driving by tomorrow. LOL. It might be not enough. So you guys are shaking a little bit there. You're kind of wobbling on a crankshaft and transmission pan. I like sitting on the recliner. So. All right. Sky hook there, back here. Just like that, just like that. All right, let's uh, let's look at the bobcat. I'm trying to pick this little girl out of there. Wish us luck. We got the engine and trans out. Not too bad. 
a lot easier pulling out of the trunk than anything else. So here's how the trunk looks. I haven't found anything really cool. I found a tail light. And what do we got? Skelly antifreeze. Carburetor choke cleaner. Some odds and ends. So we're gonna start cleaning this baby out and see how good the trunk pan is. I think it's pretty good. I see in the whole process of unloading it, clean it out. We lost a gas tank, but I know I was was partially responsible for that the other day. I was pulled it off the trailer and I was trying to hook it, and I think I got in between the gas tank. So. But let's make some hay back here and see how good we can get this trunk to turn out. Right, that didn't take long. I'm actually kind of glad that engine trans was in here because it gave a nice oil base so it didn't rust out. Um, the only thing I've really seen, a little rough spot there. Other than that, it's pretty solid. I'm going to leave this transmission fluid in here and let her soak in the metal and preserve it until I get title and get, get working on it. Um, I'll throw all this stuff back in it. So you never know. I'll never use the radiator, but the cross member and stuff. I mean, it's always nice to have. Let's see if we got any inches out of this thing. I mean, we're squatting pretty good. I have gained a little bit. I'll level off something in the front end. Yeah, got a little squat still. I will give you guys a heads up though, when I was uh, putting these S10 wheels on it, the fronts went on nice. Uh, no problems in the center. I went to the back here. Obviously over time, around here, they got smaller on the S10s. So I actually had to, I'll never use these wheels again for anything except rollers. So I just took a file, and, or actually a Dremel, and just opened that up and uh, that one fit pretty good. The other side I just kind of forced on because I was getting sick of it. All right, so that pretty much puts a wrap up on this 65. Um, all in all, I'm pretty pretty happy with the car. Um, I didn't really find any surprises that I didn't know about. The frame came out really good. Floors, expected that for 65. Um, I did make, I did find the original owners of the car that's got the title on it. I've contacted them, I have not heard back. It hasn't been too long, so. I'm hoping that they call me back, message me back, and I can show them their old car, and they can hopefully help me get a title for this thing so we can build it out, because if we do get a title over winter or in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping you guys plan to see this car back and we start rebuilding it. Uh, it's not going to be anything fancy. We're not even going to paint it. I mean, it'll just be a budget build. That's what we're going to roll off of. Uh, very basic, but... Uh, Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys next week.